we take you on a journey in one of the most remote areas of India, the state of Arunachal Pradesh, land of the dawn-lit mountains. The Himalayan ranges that extend up to the eastern Arunachal separated from Tibet. Arunachal is home to 43 tribes. They were very underdeveloped and in some ways cruel. Agriculture primarily drives the economy. It was treated as a reserve and for a long time practically closed to foreign influence. I had a great zeal to be a missionary from the very childhood. And uh, I opted for this North India. I was a stranger for them and they were a stranger for me. And I did not know their language. But I took this as a challenge. I should not be strung back, but I must go forward. I took my every effort to learn the language mm -hmm. and to learn their culture to eat with them, to sit with them, to speak with them, to go to their, to their houses. The glory of God is man fully alive. So, when there is illiteracy, when there is poverty, when there is sickness, God is not glorified. And so, through our activities, which uh, elevates human beings to human dignity, we are not only alleviating suffering or removing poverty, but we are also glorifying God by giving Him people who are fully alive. In the Miao area, we met one of the first lay catechists. My catechist, Bonahomate. We learned that life was very primitive and there was no knowledge of hygienic care. Animals stayed in the house and people didn't know how to prepare food properly. The tribe was animistic and therefore they worshipped all kinds of objects from nature. Eight years ago, he came in contact with the church and responded to the call of Christ. Since the conditions were still very primitive, his work as a catechist mainly involved social welfare. He understood the need of sharing food in times of shortage and looked after those who were sick. As a tribal, he knew the local language and translated the good message. The first contact of the church with Arunachal was made in the south. The state government was hostile to any involvement of the church. The special permits needed to enter the state were not given to religious people. Therefore, the first contact between the Catholic Church and the tribes was only possible by laymen, who were invited to study at the Bible school in Tinsukia, just outside the borders of Arunachal Pradesh. The students who embraced Catholicism returned to sow the seed in their tribes. And it is they who came forward and did the work. We are only just backing them, pushing them and encouraging them, continue to encourage them. Mm -hmm. and because we are not always there in the village. They are the people who are always in the village. We go maybe once in a week, maybe once in a month, uh, offering Holy Mass, sacraments and uh, also preaching retreats. Uh, catechizing and in many other ways we give fire to these youngsters and they in turn will spread the mm. Christianity. That is the way it is spread here. And of course we continued. The work the missionaries had done, we continued. The concentration was on the people and so the church grew and people became the part of it. Bishop George felt called to the challenging mission of the Northeast, and as a rector of the Don Bosco Bible School, he became heavily involved with the mission there. He said, We're not preaching something we have learned, 
but we are only sharing something we believed and lived. In 2005, the Diocese of Miao was established and George became its first bishop. Today he continues his ambulant missionary style to be in full contact with the emerging parishes. Bishop George very much values lay participation in the parishes to stay attuned to the people's needs. The diocesan policy is based upon integrated missionary effort to proclaim the gospel, to deepen the faith and to contribute to the human development of the people in the region. What I see is, uh, by our intervention, a lot of changes taking place in the people, which we can really notice. It is not that we made some few buildings uh, that anybody can make, but the people's attitude has changed, their mentality has changed, they are getting educated. Uh, they are becoming more forward in the society. Um, economically, they are becoming well off. And they take active participation in the church activities. All oh, these are uh, giving a lot of boost in our life. Three separate institutions have been set up Seva Kendra for human development, the John Henry Newman Foundation for the education and the Foundation for the Preservation and Promotion of Tribal Cultural Heritage. The government schools, they are everywhere, yeah. but people find a difference in ours, and so they come. And the difference they find is the familiarity and the contextualization. My whole interest when I teach in Arunachal is only that Arunachal doesn't lack anything, no? doesn't have anything less than any other states, but only thing, they have not seen the scope to which they can grow. So get the people to dream that scope so that they come back to do something great. The, the teaching that we give is in the context of the state, very much rooted in the, in the culture, in their values, with respect to their uh, one. And uh, the parents, the children, their relations, they are part of the system. If, you, if the motivation of that person called Christ is not there, it's, this life is real misery. <laughs> When you lose that focus, yeah. everybody becomes a problem. It's because the other person who is staying with me is not even from my state. We always have different views, different ideas, but everything becomes meaningful only with that person called Christ. Another challenge we have is the school to run the school. Uh, if you have to go 881 kilometers from here to go to the main town from where we can purchase things for any construction, for anything, even f food items. Uh, so to running a hostel and uh, starting uh, something new is not that easy. And we have to pay to the teachers and the teachers have to be brought from far away places like Yasa, Manipur and all that. So we have to pay them. But I say the children are not able to pay properly the fees because they are really poor. 
If they are really poor and they cannot pay, how to send them away? That we cannot do. We tell them that we will have to go, we will send them and all, but we will never send them. Uh, we keep them, give them maximum education, we try maximum to give them maximum help because they have no other way. Uh, so. When we talk to, and I would like to make it very clear to anybody who joins us and becomes part of this mission by prayer and also with their contributions, uh, I will never seek help for anything beyond the very essential. The tribes in the northern part of the state are of a different social type. Generally speaking, they enjoy a higher standard. The families are more individualistic than in the south. Families that become Catholic often have to endure a long period of social exclusion. Alcohol and drug addiction make family life difficult, with generally much domestic violence. The missionary effort in this part of the state is challenging and not without setbacks and moving stories of endurance and courage. The diocese runs special programs to empower women and to help children cope with the deficient family life at home. We spoke with Sarah, who shared with us her sincere feelings. I don't know the solid bit of prayer, but actually the words don't really matter to me. When I pray, I pray to Jesus in my own heart, with my own words. What saddens me the most is that we only have two times a year Holy Mass. If a priest or a group of religious people can stay with us through activities in their presence, the people will be joined together and they might come back to the church. I want to thank you for coming all the way from your place, traveling through the jungle and sweating, just to be with me and listen to my story. On the way to China, we met a family who were baptized only six years ago. The moment they became Catholic, the villagers said, now you are different than us, so we consider you as outsiders. The villagers even told them not to live in their village anymore. One day, a group of boys came and destroyed their little chapel next to their house. The mother of the family went down to the chapel and told them, You may break the things inside, but you cannot break our faith. You cannot break me. Every day we come together as a family and pray to be strong in our belief, even in the face of pain, persecution and suffering. See, now when we talk about poverty, it is not only material. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who are needy. May not be of a piece of bread, but a little time, a little understanding. Somebody to sit with them and chat for a while or listen for a while. Now, the, okay, here our activities are defined this way because that's the need. But in another place, we have to redefine our activities mm -hmm. according to the need of the place. So even in the richest of places, there is a need, but of a different type. But basically, uh, springing from the heart, springing from our faith where we see God in others.